Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you about how to create this simple design that looks very complex. This is something that my instructor in my college design 2 class had me create, but it is something that we can be very successful with. It's actually made simply with circles and I colored with markers for this project. You might notice in all of these um, examples here, the pattern of color is yellow, red, blue, purple, and that happens in each of the four sections of the paper, and it's yellow, red, blue, purple, yellow, red, blue, purple. It um, Each of the designs has the same color, but the background color changes, and that changes the look of the design. So I'm going to show you today how to first fold a rectangular paper to make it into a square and then how to create this design very simply. For the best results this needs to be completed on a square piece of paper. Um, it works, it's just easier that way. So if you have a rectangular piece of paper you can take one corner of the paper and line up the edge with the other edge. So you bring that paper across the diagonal and you're just going to line it up the best that you can. It's not going to be exactly perfect. Just do the best that you can. And then you're going to readjust that a little bit. You're going to crease that paper. So in a moment, I'm going to make some other folds just because it's easier for me. But you can basically cut off this rectangle right here. And this can go to the recycle bin, or you might use it to make something else, but we don't need it for this drawing. So I'm cutting carefully right along that paper line, and this I'm going to set aside. Now, for me, I don't like just having one diagonal here. I like to create at least an X on my papers, just because it helps me when it's equal, instead of having something um, asymmetrical on there. So I like to have at least this design. If you wanted to go even further and fold kind of like a plus sign, you could do that as well if it helps you. So that's again, it's not, there's no reason that this actually makes the design easier unless it helps you to have a paper that is symmetrical. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use a circle stencil, and actually this one is a little bit too big. So I'm going to go switch out for a smaller circle stencil, and we're going to repeat some circle shapes on this paper. Here's a better size of circle, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually, since this is a paper circle, I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm going to kind of, this is why I also like this line, it does help me a little bit. I'm going to line that fold up with the other fold and that helps me center my design. So I'm trying to make the circle touch the center line and I'm just going to trace very gently around the circle. Remember tracing is when you touch the edge of the circle and your paper with your pencil at the same time. So make sure you're going nice and slow. I'm going to repeat that on the other side, so on the bottom here. And I'm not letting those circles intersect just yet. These ones are just touching in the center, like that. Now I'm going to make four semicircles, and I want the circles to touch. So while I have this folded circle, it's not meeting the edge of the paper, and that's OK. My main goal is I want it to touch here, and I want it to touch the center fold line. So again, Maybe those fold lines really are helpful for lining everything up. Um, I'm going to make this go on this side. And we're going to repeat this again two more times down below. That one got pretty close to intersecting instead of just touching. So you've got to be very careful about how you're lining it up because your pencil has some thickness to it as well. You don't want to make it intersect in too many places or else the design will be more complex than you need. There we go. Okay, so I've got two whole circles and I've got four semicircles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up some circles where 
the four circles kind of meet right here. So again, I'm kind of making this touch in the center right there. And I want to make sure it's as even as I can make it. So I'm going to do one circle here. And actually, if you want to turn it the other way, it's going to be the same as what you just did. It's just you're drawing over part of your design now. Okay. So now I've got to create those um, semicircles. So here are my two circles. I've got to do semicircle, 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 semicircle. So I'm going to make those line up and touch like this. And like this. And this is creating those intersecting points like you saw in my design. So here's what's next. I'm going to go around. OK. Now, what I've had some people do is erase their pencil lines. So often, I have you guys trace over everything in black, but to make the illusion even stronger if you can't see the pencil lines or the lines where you actually drew the circles, it's even better. So um, if you drew very, very lightly, you might want to be careful on how much you erase because I drew so light that if I erase too hard, I'm going to lose all of my lines. But this one right here is kind of dark, so I can erase it pretty well and still see. You don't want to take it completely away. You just want to make it a little lighter to where your design is still visible, but just not very dramatic. So let's just pretend that I erased all of my lines to where they're less intense. And you can use marker if you can find some good nice bright markers, or I might suggest crayon or colored pencil instead. So what you're going to do is you're going to, and this is just a suggestion, you could really, I mean, unless we're doing multiples of the same design, you don't really have to repeat the colors in the same area, but when I did mine, this is what I did. I mapped out where I was going to put which color, and it doesn't have to be the exact same four colors that I use. The idea behind this design is just that the colors stay constant on each page and the background makes them look different depending on what color is chosen for the background. So if I wanted to make all of those red, I could outline that in red. And then if I wanted to do violet next to it, I could outline all of these in violet, and so on and so forth. And then I would color the entire background the same color. So this is something that works really, really well when you have the patience and the dedication to make it look nice and clean with your drawing and your coloring. And just do the absolute best you can instead of rushing through. It's not going to take you a long time, so you don't have to hurry. And even if it was going to take you a long time, I wouldn't want you to hurry anyway. I would want you to try your best. So this is just, again, adding the color. And what you really want, see mine aren't touching right there. You really kind of want them all to be meeting up right in the center. And if they don't, it's OK. Notice that one does not. So that's what we're going to be doing to create this design. And you will just finish by coloring in the colors of your choice. I'm going to say it one more time, though. You do not have to use the same colors that I am using. This is just my choice. You could choose differently. Um, as you can see, I chose differently on a lot of these designs. So thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I hope it helps you with your process.